This one is entitled um, Point Counterpoint, There is a Role Currently for Biomarkers in Genomic and Genetic Testing for Risk Stratification of Prostate Cancer. So I look at biomarkers sort of uh, uh, that the way we use them in prostate cancer sort of as a fox hunt. We want to find the fox among all the cute little dogs that are out there uh, that's hiding. We want to find the badness. We want to predict who is going to have progression, who is at risk of dying, who is going to have disease, who is not going to have disease. And we have a, a number of new and exciting biomarkers right now in prostate cancer. I'm not going to focus too much on germline right now, but I'll do that in a second. We, it's, it's sort of confusing for urologists looking at all of these biomarkers. And I don't, we're, I'm not going to discuss all of the biomarkers. Actually, this is my only slide. And basically, it car compartmentalizes men and where we might think about using a biomarker. And I don't have all the biomarkers in here. I have the ones that I'm familiar with and I think the ones that are used the most. The first one is uh, initial biopsy identifying significant cancer. That's what we want to do. We, wanna, we don't want to find insignificant cancers. We have biomarkers out there that will do that. Uh, Select MDX is a very powerful one. It's a urine test. We also have 4K and a couple of other ones. We do 1.2 million biopsies every year in the United States. We diagnose a couple hundred thousand prostate cancer patients. When we biopsy people, I think we are doing it because we believe they might have a prostate cancer. And when it comes back negative, does that go away? Maybe. Uh, but biopsy, as you well know, only uh, samples about uh, about 1% of the prostate. So we have other tests that help us, genomic tests that whom they re-biopsy. We're going to talk a little bit about genetic testing in a minute. And then we have men that have, are found to have Gleason 6s, other low-grade cancers. But we know that hiding in those prostates for about 30% of the time are more aggressive cancers. We have markers to help us, Oncotype, Polaris, Decipher, um, and uh, in the past, Promark. And then when somebody has a radical prostatectomy and positive margins about what to do, should you use radiation and things like that. Well, we have some great tests. Um, Decipher, I think, is one of the strongest tests in identifying men who benefit from uh, adjuvant radiation or don't, or people that have biochemical failure. You can actually use it to predict who is at risk of dying. So that, those are the buckets, and they're not that confusing. We have, we have the tools, and they've been looked at. So what I want to do is uh, share with you a, a video that I made with uh, Clovis Oncology in Boulder, who have one of the PARP inhibitors, to try to explain uh, at our level and patient level what we are talking about when we talk about these Germ, uh, germline testing and understanding germline somatic and when to do it. In medicine, we have a number of acronyms that we use to remember things. Uh, there's one that is very helpful in this whole thing about uh, germline and acquired somatic mutations, and it's called PROOF. The PR stands for prognosis. So if men have these BRCA1 and 2 mutations, it affects their prognosis. It affects their prognosis in the way time to progression in and overall survival. It's pretty clear. The importance is if we use survival curves and we identify men who are BRCA1, 2 positive and compare them to men that are negative, we clearly see that this has an impact on survival. Let's talk about the first O, which is onset. One of the reasons to screen for mutations early uh, that it relates to the fact that men who have these mutations tend to present earlier and have a more aggressive cancer. 
Recently, we've learned that men on active surveillance who have BRCA1 and 2 mutations actually have more of a chance that they're going to progress. And so it's sort of a warning to watch these people closer. It goes along with other things we use, which include Leeson score, PSA, clinical stage, scanning, and things like that. The second O has to do with origin, and it's pretty straightforward. It can be a germline mutation, which is inherited, or it can be an acquired mutation, which is also called somatic. So it's important to monitor a man maybe more than once. He may present initially with a prostate cancer, has risk factors, is checked out, and is found to be BRCA1 and 2 negative. In other words, this person did not have an inherited germline mutation, but let's say about six years after his treatment, he presents with metastatic disease. That is a time when one might consider again testing for these BRCA1 and 2 mutations because it now can become an acquired or a somatic mutation, differentiating that from a germline mutation. So you can do a tumor biopsy, and people have done that, or sort of these liquid biopsies where you look at circulating cells and DNA to try to pick it up. Why do you care? You care because they have a different prognosis and uh, at most of the time a different management strategy. So now we're to the F, which is frequency. In men with advanced prostate cancer, the frequency is about one in eight or 12% that they have these mutations. And one in eight is, a, you know, in my opinion, and, and patients do, a significant number. So I, I, I figured that was a good way to try to make my point is that we do need these markers and as urologists uh, and, and the pro for this is that they are helpful. And uh, it, it's not that difficult to, um, to understand the, the genomic markers which are on this slide which help us guide who to biopsy, who to follow, um, who to give radiation to. And then there's the other side of it, which has to do initially with what we call germline, which are an inherited mutations that put you at risk of developing prostate cancer earlier and aggressive prostate cancer. And it also uncovers family history of, of, the, of uh, the diseases and uh, you know, I could I can say you know personally, I was my wife died of ovarian cancer at age 50. She had multiple cancers. That raises the risk in our family of having having uh, BRCA1 and 2 mutations. That's almost the give me that my three sons need to be tested uh, for these mutations. And uh, in fact, that's uh, happening right now. So I would say that uh, that. The pro wins here. We need to do these tests. 